All right, guys, let's get some NCAA basketball picks and props for Friday, March 29th slate of games. Trey, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Have you start us off? Yeah, I already put up a loss. My game legitimately just ended. I give out the Arizona Wildcats minus seven half going up against Clemson, and they never had a chance to cover the spread. They were down early and were fighting out a hole that they could never get out of. Uh, really thought this was going to be there. They were going to make a Final Four run. Uh, alas, same old, same old. I don't know how Clemson continues to win games, Trey. It makes me so upset, but uh, I have to respect them, right? You got to put some respect on a team that makes the Elite Eight uh, after I didn't think they should be in the tournament. So shout out, Clemson. Uh, I have Illinois tonight on the money line going up against Iowa State. The game has not started. We're recording just a little bit early. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hopping off and watching that game. Illinois, the money line was to play. Trey, let's go to the player props. How do you start us off? Yeah, I gave out Terrence Shannon to go over 21 and a half points against Iowa State. Uh, late game has not started yet. Excited, very excited to watch that game. Yeah, and I've got R.J. Davis to go over 22 and a half points going up against Alabama. Should be a high-scoring, fast-paced game. R.J. Davis, one of the best scorers in the country. He should hit that number. Trey, let's go to our place for tomorrow. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to be breaking down the Cinderella game, this NC State going up against Marquette one. And I believe this is going to be a very entertaining game to watch. And in my opinion, both teams – deserve to be here nc state they beat texas tech and oakland to get to the sweet 16 and they controlled both games winning it by an average of 80 to 70 so winning by an average of 10 points per game in marquette they beat western kentucky and colorado to get here and they were down at certain points in the second half in both those games but they did pull away towards the end marquette they won both of those games by an average score of 84 to 73 so winning by an average of 11 points per game so like i said i expect this game to be competitive. So I'm just going to take the points here. I'm going to take NC State plus six and a half in this game. And I bet a lot of people believe that Marquette's just going to blow out the Cinderella here. And I was actually one of those people. Uh, I texted Bear this morning saying, ah, the slate is terrible. NC State's going to get blown out. But I did my research here, and I think the Wolfpack are going to stay in this game, mainly because of their rebounding. Marquette, they just do not have a ton of size. And I think they're going to get killed in the painted area in this game. And NC State, they've been playing bully ball here over the last three weeks, and that's why they're on a seven-game winning streak. And I just truly believe that Marquette will not have an answer for DJ Burns in the painted area. If Burns can stay in this game and stay out of foul trouble, he's going to be a massive difference maker for us here, obviously. Look for NC State to leave everything out there on the court. They have nothing to lose here in this game and uh, try to keep Kolek out of the pick-and-roll game because he's been dominating uh, teams in the first two rounds with that. I think this matchup... Uh, is going to be the one that we need to be paying attention to, Kolek versus the interior defense. So give me NC State here. I'm, I am I think they're going to be play a pretty competitive game. I'm taking them plus six and a half versus Marquette. Yeah, I like the play there, Trey. Hopefully that is a good game there. Uh, for my play today, I'm going to be looking at Gonzaga going up against Purdue. This is the perfect matchup, and this is the best matchup for every, everybody in the country to just tune in and watch one of these teams choke at the end. This is the Chokers Bowl brought to you by both of these historic programs who love the crumble at the most important parts of the season. Gonzaga, we all know they do great in the regular season, then they get to the Sweet 16. They can't find a way to win a game after the Sweet 16. Gonzaga is better than Purdue, you can say, because Purdue typically loses by now in the NCAA tournament. And this game, I'm going to take the points with Gonzaga and hope that we see one of these teams collapse at the end of the game. I do think Gonzaga has the best matchup against Purdue out of any team in the tournament so far. They have Graham E.K. down low. They've got Ben Gregg that comes off the bench. They have Watson who starts. He's a very reliable four. He's got some size. They have Huff who comes off the bench. So if Gonzaga gets into foul trouble, which we've seen teams get into a ton of foul trouble against Zach Eady already, they should be just fine. They might even run a double heavy set and try to bully Zach Eady if that's even possible. I can see them playing E.K., Watson, and Gregg at the same time. That would be a very good lineup to try to minimize Zach, uh, Zach Eady. I think Gonzaga has been one of the better teams so far in the tournament, beating the hell out of McNeese State in the first game, and then playing maybe the best half of basketball in the tournament we've seen against Kansas in that second half of the game in the round of 32. I also like Mark Few. He seems like an old guy you can just grab a beer with and he can tell you some stories. I'm not going to give up on Gonzaga here. I think Purdue is more likely to crumble under the pressure, so I'm going to take the Zags here with the points. I do think they're the overall better team. Purdue, they say the one-trick pony with Zach Eady down low. They do have some decent shooting. But I'm going to take Gonzaga with the points. I think they just take this game outright. So give me Gonzaga with the points as the play. Trey, let's go with the player props. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with one of Bears' favorite players. Give me Dalton Connect. I'm going to take him to go over 20 and a half points going up against Creighton. I really love this over for Connect in this game. We should see him have a ton of volume like usual. And more often than not, that turns into a ton of points. Even though he struggled in his last round against Texas, he only scored 18 points in that game, barely hitting the under. 
And that's because he shot 28% from the field. He shot 28% from the field and still barely hit the under. But we cannot forget the type of run that he was on before that. In the seven games before that, Connect, he was averaging a massive 25.6 points per game, which is well over this number. And Connect, he's getting a decent matchup here versus Creighton. Yes, Creighton, they are great on the offensive end. They play at an absurd pace. But that kind of puts their defense behind the eight ball and allows opposing offenses to get up a ton of shots. And with Connect taking the majority of those shots for Tennessee, we should see him have a ton of volume like usual here in this one. And with Connect being a senior, we have to assume he's going to leave everything out there on the court. Connect, he's trying to get to the NBA. And currently a lot of mocks have him in the lottery and he's trying to cement that. So give me Dalton Connect. I'm going to take him to go over 20 and a half points versus Creighton. Yeah, Trey, I like that play there. Uh, for my play, I'm going to stay in the same game. Give me Trey Alexander to go over 16.5 points going up against the University of Tennessee. Creighton, they've got a trio of guards that have been doing the majority of the scoring all season long, and Trey Alexander is one of those players on the season. He's scoring 17.7 points per game. He's shooting 45.1% from the field, and he's been a monster so far in the tournament. He scored 19 points against Akron. He didn't come off the floor in that game. Then he scored 20 points against Oregon. He also didn't come off the floor in that game. He played all 50 minutes in a double overtime thriller. Alexander's on a great run, scoring double-digit points in 16 consecutive games. He shot more than 13 times in all 16 of those games as well, so we're getting a ton of volume. And he scored over 18 points with this number set, 16 and a half. He's gone over 18 points in 11 of the last 16 games. Tennessee took down Texas in their last game. It was ugly to watch. Texas has now played back-to-back sneakers against Colorado State and Tennessee. Creighton's a way better scoring team than Texas, especially in the tournament so far, putting up 77 and 86. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. We've seen these teams play in high-scoring games. We've seen these teams play in low-scoring games. I think both teams can win in a high-scoring game and a low-scoring game. This should be a very competitive matchup. I love a ton of points to be scored in this one, though. Give me Trey Alexander, over 16.5 points as to play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. How do you start us off? I love fellow Trey's doing work, so hopefully he hits the over for you. Uh, I'm going to go with NC State plus six and a half versus Marquette. I feel like I got to take the points here in this game. It's going to be competitive. Marquette, they've allowed teams to play uh, in keeping games with them. So I expect nothing different. Also going with Dalton Connect over 20 and a half points versus Creighton. Connect, he's going to get up over 20 and a half shots in this game easily and tri- take a lot of trips to the free throw line. So I expect him to have himself a day. Trey, we're recording right now during the UConn game. It's about to end. What do you think the score is of the UConn game? I checked like five minutes ago and it was like 76 to 45. So, okay. They won 82 to 50. Yeah, I mean, nobody's good. stopping this team. Let's just they're end good. the video now. Nobody's beating UConn. Uh, I've got Gonzaga plus five and a half against Purdue. I would not be surprised at all if they take down Purdue. And they give me Trey Alexander over 16.5 points against Tennessee. Uh, Trey and myself will be watching that game intently, looking for both of our players to score some points. Guys, that's going to do it for the NCAA plays and props for Friday, March 29th, Lady Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Super Bowl. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, bearsprofitplays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 